Hi, I'm Matt Jackson working with Gym Club Solutions and today we're going to be looking at in-location variations. So one will be a normal in-location and one will be showing a height variation, so one that's lifting higher towards handstand. Okay, so when starting to teach in-locations on rings, what we need to understand is to put the gymnast in the right position so they actually understand how to apply pressure on the rings, where to look and where we want their heels to be driving to before they apply pressure on the rings to make the in-location rise above the height of the rings. So what I'm going to do now is show you where I'd like the gymnast positions to be so that we can think about all of the right stages when teaching an indicator. So what we want to see first is when the gymnast is laying flat, we want the gymnast's arms to be like in a wide V position. Definitely we don't want the arms to be past horizontal here like this. We want the rings to be slightly in front of the gymnast with the palms flat on the floor. The reason the palms are going to be flat on the floor is so we can apply pressure down helping us to simulate the same pressures we would do on the rings. We want the gymnast's head position to be elevated, so they're looking forwards, and we want the gymnast's heels to be tight and leading, so we're simulating the same position as in a swing, so their heels should be together, their knees should have tension, their hands should have pressure on the floor, and their chin should be elevated, simulating the press phase of the inlocate. After we've got the gymnast to understand all of the positions for their head, their hands and their heels, we're then going to let the gymnast rock through this motion. So this is similar to what you would simulate in a swing, but we want the swing to be high enough and the pressure to be enough on the rings to direct the inlocation higher and not just stop low and roll through the rings. Okay, so we're going to get the gymnast to feel the same positions as they rock, again looking at their head position, their hand position applying pressure and where their heels are getting to. Okay, after the gymnast has learnt how to rock properly on the floor and look at all the right positions to press, we're then going to bring the gymnast onto this raised surface. So today we're using a springboard with a bit of carpet on top. Again, could be a normal block in the gym. Anything that you've got to simulate this kind of setup will work. What I'm trying to get the gymnast to understand is I'm going to bring the gymnast heels slightly further above their head now and again get them to apply pressure on the floor as if they're putting pressure on the rings and keep their chin slightly lifted so their head doesn't drop and they roll through the rings early on an inlocate. So I'm just going to lift the gymnast heels and the gymnast is going to have to work hard to let their shoulders drop down, keep pressure on the floor and keep their chin up. At this point they need to be in complete tension but it gives them a good understanding of the direction and the pressure they need to hold throughout the inlocate. Okay, so when teaching inlocates on rings, you'll probably have a group of gymnasts and you'll want some side stations to do. So the position that Luca can get into now using the block, again, it could be a crash mat against the wall, it could be anything that you can raise the gymnast's feet against to. Some gyms have padded walls which work nicely too. The gymnast is going to raise their heels up against the block and again simulate the position of the inlocate. So the gymnast's legs will be elevated, toes pointed, the head position will be correct, the same as the inlocate, the pressure on the floor will be the same as the inlocate, and I'm going to apply a small amount of pressure to the back of the gymnast's knees here, just to key in the tension that they need to hold when their heels are raising, so their legs don't bend as they pass through the inlocation. Another nice preparation you can use for inlocate on rings is to build a setup like this. So we've got a soft safety crash mat, a couple of angled wedges, and we've got a block on a wedge. So the reason for doing this is, I'm gonna put the gymnast with their heels slightly raised with their hands on the wedges. This is to simulate the rings, the head position, and the pressure. I'm then gonna bring the gymnast's heels off the block. So their heels are leading, then they're gonna change their shape to press through handstand, and then we're gonna extend the way onto the mat. The reason we want the extension onto the mat is when the gymnast passes over the top in their inlocate, we then want them to open their shoulder angle, giving a nice three swing through the bottom of the rings to help them lift their heels for a next one. So when you're doing multiple inlocates, we want to build the height. If we go through the rings and close the gymnast's shoulder angle, the swing will stop and then it will be very difficult to move forward. Okay, so when we're doing this, again, we're looking at the gymnast's pressure on the blocks, their head position, and their heels. So when the gymnast is here, I'm gonna lift the gymnast's heels first, simulating the heel drive, then their ribs are gonna come in through handstand, then they're gonna extend away, 
with a nice open shoulder angle, which is what we want to see on the second half of their inlocation. Okay, as you can see in this preparation, when we're using the laminate sliders, what we want to do is simulate the movement of the rings. So using the sliders can give the gymnast a good key of how the rings should move. So when the gymnasts are on here, again, we want the rings slightly turned out so they're angled at the swing here. As the gymnast heels lift up, they then want to slide the laminate sheets towards each other, making them rise closer towards handstand before they fall away. Again, the sheets may not slide as they fall away. What we want to see is their shoulders pushed open so we get a nice extension on the second half of the inlocate and not a head tucked in and a pike at the bottom causing a lack of swing into the next inlocation. Okay, as we can look at in this preparation, we're gonna look at the gymnast's swing height, their head position, their arm position, and their heel drive. So when we're doing the swing, we're gonna be supporting the swing with the hand on the chest and the other hand on the legs so that we can guide the gymnast height and make sure they're leading in the right direction in their swing. Okay, in this next preparation, we're gonna look at supporting the inlocation. Again, we're gonna be underneath the gymnast slightly so that we can get our hand onto their chest and the other hand on their legs. The reason for this is we can guide their swing and also help them lift their heels. So as they pass over the top in the inlocation, we can then move slightly and try and slow down the second half of the swing. Okay, and finally, the last preparation is multiple inlocate. So one inlocation will be lifting above the rings. The second one will be showing even more height lifting towards handstand. So then we can build up inlocations. Eventually, inlocations will become forward long swings, which will rise all the way through to handstand in the rings like we've looked at in previous videos. Thanks for watching our video tutorial today on inlocates on rings, different variations of the skill, so looking at the rise of height in the different inlocations. Take your time to develop the swing, the head position, the pressure on the rings and the heel drive, making sure this is all done properly before you move on to inlocates that rise slightly higher towards handstand, making sure they have safety when they're working on the rings. You can also do strapped rings, which gives safety to the gymnast so that when they swing higher, if they do close their shoulder angle, they don't ping off the rings at the bottom. Once this is consolidated, then you can then move on to using chalk and guards on rings.